We are uh, now uh, look forward to hearing from the, the, the President of Estonia, uh, Kirsty Kaljulaid, who's had an extraordinary career. Uh, I don't understand the, the genome and genetics part, uh, but it has had more impressive economic and financial jobs in and out of the government than uh, almost anyone I can think of. And we're fortunate enough to hear from her, uh, who also represents, by the way, a country of uh, con considerable success and happiness. Madam President. Dear Ukrainian friends and uh, friends of Ukraine, I'm very happy to be back to this uh, the only internally displaced conference I used to visit globally. So um, happy to be with you and precisely very happy to see uh, free uh, Mr. Sensov here because I believe many of us here have called for his uh, freedom and the freedom of the sailors and other prisoners. Many of us, including me, have posed with hashtags free Sensov and now it happened. On the other hand, let's not forget this is the first step but the run is a marathon, 42 kilometers. Yes, right now, it's not yet quite easy to say that we have taken a really long step forward. But I know that somewhere at around 21K mark, the political elite of this world will feel that we might be closer to the finish line than we are. Let's at that point also remember, Crimea is still occupied this is something we need to solve. It takes strategic patience. It may take 50 years. Baltic states were occupied 50 years, but this was never recognized. And this is what gave us back our freedom. So I wish you all the happiness, and I wish us all strategic patience in that question. In preparation for this speech, I realized that while political thinkers of the Baltic states are often invited to share their reform experience, our experience is to a certain extent rather irrelevant. Its technicalities are still relevant, this is true, but their meaning to the outside world, if repeated, will be totally different. When we started out, exciting as it was exiting all this turbulence of the last days of the Soviet occupation, the world in general, and Europe in particular, were, in historic terms, relatively safe heaven. Liberal democratic values, media freedom, personal freedoms, even global living standards, emerging markets, everything statisticians measured was ticking up. There was a safe heaven. Maybe a bit stagnant, missing the opportunities of new technologies because the sectors where these technologies emerged, telecom, medicine, they all had long and protected investment cycles. But in general, it was possible to claim that the reform experiments of emerging markets, including the Baltic states, painful as they were for the society, generated a rapid societal change, which its people were able to tolerate easily, because there was this beckoning of the developed Western stability. The case of Ukraine is clearly different today. Technically, yes, you still have to do exactly the same thing. Build the rule of law state, making sure that the legal space allows rapid generation of SMEs and quick uptake of new technologies. But the rationale for attractive international investors to participate is totally different. The liberal democratic world is a turbulent place right now. The deliverables for middle class have been relatively weak, and the wage stagnation has been made harder to tolerate by quickly rising executive pay in developed countries. Rising inequalities, lack of social mobility, which means bad luck becomes hereditary, breed disappointment, and create active search for radical change. I believe your initial uh, video presentation clearly showed exactly where we are. The search is loud, the search is visible, the search is uncomfortable, but the new consensus is nowhere to be seen. Until capitalism adjusts itself to more win-win solutions, as it will undoubtedly do, I'm, I'm sure it will do, because alternative solutions, more state intervention to provide more just redistribution, is less acceptable for free world, for free market believers. 
that Ukraine has to do in this context, on this background, its reforms. So you are striving to convince your citizens to continuously work for the reforms to deliver for them something which people in the free Western world nowadays doubt can it ever be delivered. It's totally different if I compare it to 30 years ago when we set out with our reform program. On the other hand, this is something which is also your opportunity. At Kintra Estonia joining the Euro area in 2011, in normal circumstances, it would have been a technical happening, just one more country in the Euro area. But after the crisis and the confidence crisis in the Euro, this was seen by the world as a heroic step Look, somebody still wants to join this euro area when we are all doubting ourselves, even doubting our euro area. And there, there I see the emerging Ukrainian story now. You are still striving to join this free world of free markets where everybody is treated equally, where everybody's rights are guaranteed, where there is free, uh, media freedom. All this you are still striving to do. This tells us it is still worth to see how we can make it better, how we can make it maybe more equal, how we can solve the current problems. But if you want it, it has to be worth it. And I see here a story arising for what Ukraine could be known in the future. It was the country who believed in universal human rights, in liberal democratic values and showed that while everybody else was doubting, you succeeded. I wish you all success in this, and I am quite sure that one day there will be Ukraine free of politically motivated capital controls, Ukraine certain to clamp down on corruption, Ukraine guaranteed to provide economic climate suitable to diversify economy, Ukraine strictly rule of law state, protecting each and every one by its legal system independently of their social status. Ukraine, which treats all capital, big and small, foreign and local, equally. Ukraine, where SMEs can prosper and grow without the fear of unlawful developments capping their future. Ukraine, the model of corporate responsibility instead of oligarchic economy. Ukraine, where legal space is welcoming to the society-wide use of new technologies, narrow AI, driverless cars, and the rest I cannot name, but what might be around the corner. Around the corner, we don't see yet behind. Ukraine, the model of combating climate change instead of a country dependent on gas transit. This is the Ukraine, which we might see in 30 years' time, if your strive, your strive, your effort to leapfrog will keep up. There are all the reasons to try. There is no lack of good ideas today. Just read the common criticisms of the Western world today. Concentrated wealth, ingrown public sector habits, making states an obstacle to the development and, uh, and also unfit to provide society with necess necessary social market guarantees to keep capitalism in the position to deliver for wider society. This is the criticism of our societies. This is the byword by which you can develop your society to be a better version of what has been done before. Yes, I know this can happen because my own country is a better version of public management than any Western developed country has been able to create. Now many are trying to do the same, but nobody yet has achieved. So I said when sometimes people ask me why should we stand up for Ukraine because you are, they are not doing their own homework, I said, look, 30 years ago when you were supporting us and our development, you didn't do it because you thought you will somewhere gain at some point a digital wonderland where well different, well transforming experiments of society are being carried out and this will be something where you can learn something useful. So who tells you that Ukraine is not the next place globally where these developments will actually show us the way? I'm quite sure this could be. And actually, if I think of your scheme of happiness, the happiness of this conference, indeed, this is something where I think I am, you are, you are, and I am in line. Because I feel that 
with new technologies, emerging technologies, lots of jobs are being taken from us. But there is one thing which nobody can do better than human beings, and this is being a compassionate human being to another human being, to all of us, all of ourselves. This is our narrow specialization for the future. Many of, of our people already work in providing other people happiness, communication, interesting videos, online content. This is all making real economic progress from providing people people to people support. Because the future of the work is such that for simple things like, I don't know, taking a ride on a plane, we don't talk to anybody. And the talks we had before, 20 years ago, to get on the plane, they were meaningless talks, yet we wasted our time. In the future societies, this is exactly where we don't waste our time, leaving us free to strive to develop careers where we make each other, human beings, happy. So I absolutely see why a country which has to fight corruption, break the current oligarchic economic model, break all the, uh, all the problems which you have also in your financial sector, financial system, work with your social systems, uh, radically consolidate the sector to be able to replace concrete with people. Why this country is talking about happiness? You need a story. Your story will be inspiring your own people. It will also be, when you start to succeed, inspiring the outside world and the strive for happiness, not simply the strive to do away with the old problems is indeed something which I value very much. I wish you all the success in this, and I hope that you will not yourself well run out of the energy at the 21st kilometer mark, which very often happens, by the way, with marathon runners. I know it's a, long, a longer run, and I wish you all the success, but I do believe, and I've been saying so for three years while I've been Estonian president, who knows that the next very progressive social environment will not evolve here in Ukraine. One little last thing. I think what we haven't figured out, but have to figure out, is how to become green economies. And you have the worst conditions to be talking about the green economy. I mean, you have really well downtrodden energy system, lots of losses in the systems. If your people had to pay gas price, which is market price, my salary would not suffice to heat up a two-room apartment in Ukraine. I'm quite sure of that. In a way, you remind me of my own country 30 years ago when we simply didn't have institutions, government offices, nothing. We had nothing. And so we didn't despair that we cannot do it the way that, like everybody else had done, putting, I mean, many people sitting in various rooms in various parts of the country. We put every service online, 99% of public services online. If we had said, this, this is what we will do, at that point, people would have said, you're crazy. If you say that you want Ukraine to be 100% green economy, maybe even quicker than the Europeans trying to achieve it by 2050, they will say you are crazy. Don't believe them. Don't believe them. Do your own thing and all the success to Ukraine. Thank you for listening.